So over the last few months, I've basically just been making as many of these fantasy style renders as I can. Um, and if you've been following my Instagram, you've seen a lot of that over the last few months. And uh, so what I want to do in this video is just go over some of the top things that I've learned and what I think is the most important things to incorporate when you're making this kind of stuff. So I've also released a whole new course going way deeper into this. It's like a step-by-step -step guide of doing this over and over again and a whole structured course around it. This also comes with the huge fantasy pack that Sweeper and I made together. If you want to use that in your work, you can get it through there. So there's, there's a ton more I'm not mentioning here, but if you want to see everything that's in here, I'll leave a link below. So what I want to do is go into some of my top tips from, from creating that whole thing and also just from doing a lot of these renders over the last few months. Before you even start making the render, I think it's a good idea to do a little bit of planning without over planning. So in my opinion, this is one of the things that people overcomplicate a lot. Um, when you see people teaching this stuff, you'll see them with like a reference mood board of like a hundred different images and they've planned out like every single detail and the whole image are going to do. I don't think it's good to do that extreme of uh, a, a job of planning because um, at least not for me. I like to just get an idea and go straight into it and start making it as soon as I can. But with that being said, it is good to do a little bit of uh, planning and prep work beforehand to make sure that process goes as smooth as possible. So one of the things I like to do is get reference images. So a reference image is just that. It's just an image that you reference while you're making your own render. Just to keep myself on track for the render so that it I don't get stuck as easily so that and the, and the chance I do get stuck, I can just refer back to that and get back on track. And also the other thing too is that if you have an idea in your head, your your mind kind of generates these really foggy images and these really fuzzy images of, it, it seems clear, but when you try and translate that into a render, it often doesn't translate that well. And so having just a solid picture to look at as you're creating something, especially if you're going for a certain style, like a certain fantasy kind of style, I think it's really important to just have some kind of reference to look at so that you can make sure you're going in the right direction throughout the whole process when you do start. So I'd like to keep it very simple. Uh, I just take uh, this software called Pure Ref. I'm sure you've heard of it before, but it's just a free software that um, it's kind of like a mood board basically where you can just drag and drop images straight into there. Now I didn't use this software for a long time because I thought that it was hard to use and you had to like download the image and then re-upload it. Turns out it's actually really easy. You just drag and drop. You can do it straight from Google, straight from Mid Journey. Uh, from anywhere and just drop it in there and then you can save the layouts and reopen them later. As long as you're looking at something as you're making your render, um, I think it's a really powerful trick to do because it just, yeah, makes the whole process much easier and much smoother. It takes a lot of the guesswork out. So I don't always do that, but I usually do. And when I do, I find it really does help. Okay, so the next tip is focus heavily on composition and lighting. So I I talk about this a lot and maybe you're tired of hearing me talk about that, but I, I want to focus specifically on composition right here. So composition just means uh, basically the way that you arrange all the different visual elements that are in your shot in the two dimensional picture that we get in the end, right? So you have to remember that although we're in 3D space in Blender and you can orbit and rotate around all these different things and manipulate the lighting in any way and, and you're in this three dimensional space, you have to remember that the end result of a render is a two dimensional image and that's how everyone else is going to see it. So lining lining objects up in that two dimensional image and focusing on how that shot is composed is extremely important. Um, I would say composition and lighting are the two most important things when it comes to being able to create an image that actually looks good in the end. So I, I don't want to just focus on uh, like kind of this airy fairy idea of composition. I want to give you some actual concrete tools that you can use uh, to improve your compositions. So one of them is the rule of thirds. Now I don't actually like the name of that because it's definitely not a rule, but uh, the rule of thirds is basically just lining up important parts of the shot, whether it's the horizon line or where you have certain structures or uh, the subject, like the, a person in the shot or just any important thing with either the lines in the rule of thirds or the intersection of those lines on uh, those points in the middle. So the reason you might want to do this is kind of, I kind of just recommend it as a, the most basic starting point for composition, where if you don't know what to do at all, um, I would say either line things up with the center line, which is kind of a thing that people generally don't recommend, but I'm recommending it here because it can look really nice and, and uh, a pleasing composition. Either do that or line things up with the, the rule of thirds. 
Now you don't have to line up everything with this and I don't use this all the time. There's plenty of images that I have where it's not lined up at all with anything here, but it can be a really nice uh, guideline to use when you're just trying to find some sort of order in your composition. So the horizon line, you can line that up there. The, the line where the sky meets the trees, you can line that up there. You can line up the yeah the subject with the real thirds. It's just a nice way to, uh, to just get a starting point for your composition. You can turn it on in Blender as well. If you go into the composition settings uh, or like the, the viewport overlay settings, I'll just put up a screen recording of this. You can turn on the rule of thirds in Blender and actually have it straight in the viewport, which is nice. Another compositional trick you can use that's really powerful is leading lines. So this is something that uh, I use all the time as well, where you basically just have lines in the image that guide your eye naturally towards a certain point in the image. That point is usually going to be the focal point or like the most important part of the picture. So you can use things like, I don't know, like hanging ropes or the way arches are kind of moving around or, um, you know, just different lines throughout the image that appear naturally. You can kind of move things around and adjust them in a way so that they kind of happen to point and, and guide your eyes towards some specific point in the image. When you have this laid out this way, it, it can often look really, really pleasing and it's really easy to do because you just have, if you just kind of look at the picture in the, the rendered view, just try to use these things to kind of almost like draw paths towards a certain point in the image. Um, and when you do this nicely, it, it can look really, really nice uh, and it's not hard to do. And then the last trick I want to give you is framing. So there's, there's tons of these, way more of these that you can use, but I'm just giving you a quick overview in this video. But framing is where basically, um, imagine like a picture frame around a picture. That's It's kind of the same idea of that, where instead of using a picture frame, you're using natural elements in the picture. So it could be anything from uh, trees or foliage around the outside to archways that kind of uh, help frame something in the middle to, you know, any like blurred out objects to uh, even like using a, a literal picture frame. I've seen people do that where they have a picture frame inside the picture that's framing something. There's all sorts of, there's all sorts of ways you can do it, but really it's just about intentionally blocking out certain parts of the image around your focal point around the point of the image, which is the main part of the image. And when you when you do this, uh, it could just be a really nice way to get a solid looking, pleasing composition. So there's way, way, way more compositional tools and, and different rules you can apply. Uh, so I, I encourage you to look into this more if you're not very familiar with it. But basically, if you use enough of these tricks, you're using kind of these fundamental tools which create a pleasing image in the first place. If you get good at composition and lighting, you can really make anything look good. Okay, the next tip is separate out modeling from the rest of the scene building if you can. Um, so this is a kind of general recommendation. It's not a strict rule. I don't always do this and I don't recommend you always do this, but I find that it's really helpful for me when I separate out the modeling phase from the actual scene building stage uh, or, or even don't even do modeling in my, in my render at all. So what I mean exactly is sometimes what I'll do is um, have days where I just do modeling only and then I'll create a bunch of different models and then the next day or a few days later I'll take all those models that I've made and I'll just rearrange them into a way that I can get a full render done really really quickly without having to do any modeling at all so it doesn't have to be your own models you can buy packs if you want um, I do that a lot you can you can build your own asset packs and, and spend full days modeling and just go crazy with it like that if you want or you can just do a, a, you can split it up if you want into like, I'm going to model a house. The next day I'm going to use the house. There we go, right? You can do it that way too. The reason I'm recommending this is because if you can separate out those two things, it lets you focus on not necessarily more creative decisions, but more scene building techniques and just cranking out the actual picture rather than focusing all your time on these small details, which um, you can often get really, really caught up in without seeing the bigger picture. So something that I used to do all the time um, this is a mistake I used to make a lot is starting the render with the smallest details. And what happens when you do that is it's, it's really easy to get caught up in like making one model look good, zooming way in on it, doing all this intricate detail on this one thing. Then you zoom back out after all this work. And then you just look at the picture and you realize that you've basically done almost nothing in the, in the bigger picture. Right. Um, and so if you can separate out that stage from the stage where you're just 
moving objects around and adding lighting and adding atmosphere around and, and just making a good shot, um, it, it makes the second part way, way easier if you have all the energy and all the time to do that versus if you kind of use up that energy and time towards smaller details like modeling. So speaking of modeling, um, your modeling doesn't have to be that complicated. So something I do a lot is just use very simple shapes and put a nice texture on. And that is often enough to create really, really nice models if you know kind of what you're doing a little bit. So for example, if you're gonna make an archway, um, you could just take a circle, delete the bottom half, take those two bottom vertices, stretch them down, and then just extrude that out into a three-dimensional shape. Just throw some pillars on, some really simple pillars and put a nice texture on, just like some random rock texture from Quixel or something like that. And before you know it, you've got something that's actually usable in a render that doesn't have to be really, really intricate and complicated. Um, you can you can make some really nice looking images without having really, really complex models if you, if you want. Uh, that's not to say complex models are bad or anything, but using simple shapes can be very powerful if you can just kind of manipulate them in just the right way uh, in, in a simple but effective way and just put a nice texture on. Uh, it's, it's the same technique I use for like stairs and tiles and most of the modeling that I do, to be honest, it's just kind of simple shapes stuck together with a nice texture on it. Okay, the last tip is animating your renders can actually be a really nice way to enhance them. So I stayed away from animating for a long time. Um, the way I got good at it, uh, or at least got better at it, was kind of the brute force method of just doing it a ton of times, which is what I've been doing over the last few months. Um, but here's what I've learned from it. Number one is your camera movement doesn't have to be complicated. And often the more simple it is, the more cinematic and actually nice it's going to look. So most of the time, what I do, to be honest, is literally just two location keyframes where the camera starts at the beginning, moves forward, and then there's a location keyframe at the end, right? So keyframe at the beginning, move it forward, keyframe the end for like 10 seconds. That's going to give you a really nice shot. And it doesn't have to move that much at all. It can be moving just a little bit throughout the, throughout the animation. And then if you just have some particles or whatever else moving around a little bit or not even, um, that can often just be a really nice, pleasing animation to look at. I, one, one thing I see a lot of people do when they're not that familiar with animation is they think the camera movement has to be like super sporadic and crazy to be a good animation. That's not true at all. If you watch any movie, um, most of the time you'll just see most of the shots in the movie are simple camera movements. If not, the camera might not even be moving at all. Um, so if you just kind of try and replicate that cinematic kind of style and that will lead to often very pleasing shots that you get. So often simpler is better um, when it comes to moving the camera around. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I, don't, I don't do complicated camera movements very often. And um, I've just been enjoying doing like very simple pushes and pulls and that's it. So if you've made it this far in the video, you'll probably want to check out the new fantasy environments course that I just made. So basically, it's a step-by-step -step guide on creating these three environments that you can see here. And then, of course, you get access to all the project files, and there's a Discord with everyone who's in this course and the last course is in there, so you can get feedback and help through there. And I'm in there, too. You can ask me questions. It also comes with five, uh, yes, five asset packs, which is, I think, I, I might have gone a little bit overboard on the amount of assets that it comes with. But one of the cool things that I did here was I commissioned two artists uh, one of them was HBit Project, who does this really, really nice classical architecture kind of thing. He's really good at that. And so I hired him to create this custom pack for us in the course. So you get that when you join. The other one is the is this Indian temple pack by Prabhu. And this one, uh, just this really beautiful pack that he created for us um, with these really, really nice, intricate Indian temple kind of style of models. So you get that one as well. And then of course, the one I mentioned earlier, the one that I made in collaboration with Sweeper 3D. And of course, there's a whole course structured around all of this. So if that sounds cool, you can go check it out in the link below. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.